So I don't know what you think about this, but this just worries me always. Uh, but there's not a lot I can do about it. It's basically, let me show you, uh, this. So this is a gas pipe, right? This is actually the gas, the main gas pipe. You can see there's a stop tap on it here. Uh, and then it comes up here, branches off here, goes along, basically like just drops. that thing right where you basically think I'll just drill through the wall most of the way and then I'll turn hammer off and then I'll just gently go through so it doesn't blow out the other side uh, yeah that's what I was gonna do here but uh, <laughs> um, it didn't work so uh, yeah lesson um, mm. always drill from the outside in or turn the hammer off on the last bit and it's hard to judge that to be honest um, you can sort of measure the thickness of the wall and then put a bit of tape around your drill bit so when you get to a certain point you know to turn the hammer off but I was a bit too cocky on this one and I just didn't do it so uh, I'm just gonna have to fill that in a little bit afterwards make it good so that it doesn't look like a right mess but yeah a little bit of a mistake there Lesson learned. So I've put in the clips above the door here, and as you can see, what I've done is just put a couple of uh, fire rated clips in. These are D line clips, uh, and they're actually designed for 20mm conduit, but this cable is basically just slightly smaller than 20mm conduit, so they fit very well. Um, this is what the clips look like before you fix them on. Let me show you how they work. So these are the clips and basically the armoured goes in like that so you screw this down to your surface that you want to fix to and then the cable or conduit goes on like that then this folds over and that little slot there goes in you fold that over like that and you've got a nice solid fixing. Um, you've got your screw hole there, dead easy. And if you want to remove them later on, you can. So they're a bit like the old twin and F clips, really, sort of a modern version of that. But um, they're made by D-Line. I'll put a link in the description if you want to have a look at some yourself. But they're quite handy for these kind of situations. I'm yet to find a proper metal black clip for steel wire armour, that's what I'd really like because obviously these don't look ideal they don't blend in very well and I can't find anywhere a metal SWA cleat basically, I contacted Linian Fire Clips because I thought that they were going to bring one out they sent me a sample pack and it didn't have anything like that in it so I'm a bit upset about that really because someone needs to make this but they haven't done it yet made that good now uh, round so got rid of the horrible blown out bit I siliconed around the hole first to seal it waterproof and then went over it with some of this white filler and uh, yeah fairly good finish this is what I wanted to show you right last year I put in this three-phase socket but it was over there and they've obviously decided to move the mixer so they've just peeled the cable off the wall, unscrewed the socket, moved it across and just slung the cable around. So it looks like a right mess. So what am I going to do about that now? Do I leave it or do I just sort it out? I think I'm going to sort it out. There's some seriously vintage stuff in here, like this old switch fuse, old MEM switch fuse. Um, I don't know how old that is, but it's uh, metal. And it's, uh, yeah, not screwed closed. And there's a nice piece of cable hanging out the bottom of it. Not great. Uh, I don't know if it's actually live or not, but yeah. 
not sure about that. I probably need to check. That's the trouble. When you do work in a property and you start looking around, you start to notice things and then you kind of become responsible if you don't sort them out. It's a bit of a tricky one, really. Let me know what you guys do if you find dodgy stuff like that. Do you just ignore it? Do you report it to the customer and give them a quote to fix it? Or do you just fix it there and then for free? Which you end up spending a lot of time not getting paid for. Let me know in the comments what you'd do. There you go, much better. So I've moved that out of the way now. Uh, well, the cable, I've just tidied it all up, shortened it a little bit, left a little loop underneath still so that there's a bit of slack if they do need to move it slightly again. But um, yeah, I've got rid of a lot of that slack anyway, so that's a bit neater. So uh, I've got to drill a 50 mil hole now in the bottom of the board in order to fit this beast of a compression gland. Uh, so it's basically big enough to fit four tails, so the three phases are neutral and the earth in the middle. And it's a nice and neat way of getting all four tails into the board. So I'm gonna drill a 50 mil hole in here now. I just picked up a 50 mil Armeg hole saw. And then I'm gonna run the tails out the bottom, along through the wall, and then basically along um, along the wall here into these Henley blocks which are already in place here and uh, this earth terminal here it's a full way earth terminal This earth terminal is only a four way, but you can see it's got a lot of cables in it. Um, they've basically cut them in half in order to fit them in, so it's a bit of a mess. So I'm just gonna replace that with an eight way one so that I can fit all the cables in properly and neatly. I'm just gonna do that as well while I'm here. I don't know about you, but for me, there's nothing more annoying than an electrical cupboard full of dust and dirt and all the fuses have got dust on top of them and everything. So I'm just gonna hoover this out just to clean it all up inside. Um, just to make things a little, a little bit neater and safer. So here it is, we've got the board in. So main switch, four pole, three spare ways. Um, this is the circuit for the socket that I've installed. Um, you can see I've done my earth nut up there. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it went. I've got my tails coming out of here. Um, going along, just put one metal clip there just to secure those through the wall here. And they basically go through the wall there, run along and into these Henley blocks. Um, and then my armoured cable comes up and over.
through here. Runs along here. Down here. Through the wall. And then basically pop through here. Along and up into the three phase socket here. It's got a built in RCD, 30 milliamp to protect the socket. And it's got this isolator switch as well. So that's an interlock switch that only works when the plug's actually plugged in. So if you've ever tried to force it, don't force it because it won't work unless there's a plug plugged into it. Um, it's IP65, so it's going to be good for you know when they're washing the kitchen and stuff like that. They don't need to worry about it getting a bit wet. Um, so yeah, I'm just about to clear up and get out of here. It's been a long day. So guys, let me know in the comments what you thought of that video. It's an interesting little installation and I hope you enjoyed the video. Got another great video coming very soon. I post here every week, so if you haven't done already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified as soon as a new video comes out. And if you haven't done it yet, please smash that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm do its magic. Somewhere up here, there'll be a link to my new channel, Tools for Sparks. And on there, I'm gonna talk about some of the tools that I've used on this job, give some more in-depth reviews. For example, the Qtech tester that you've probably seen me using in this video. I'm gonna do a proper full-length review of that Qtech tester, talk about some of its features, etc. So if you like electrician's tools, hit that link, Go over to the Tools for Sparks channel and you're gonna, if you subscribe to the channel, you're gonna get to see some regular Tools for Sparks videos where you can see some new and interesting tools for electricians. So, thanks for watching guys and have a great day.